to learn to, to, to get a compile unit done. So we are start to looking for uh, different ways uh, or alternatives to SBT to but we don't have the freedom to change the build tool in, in the pipelines to to uh, integrate uh, our development with, with the rest of the teams and to deploy it to production. So the problem that we want to, to solve uh, with this exploration was like, how can add another team to my personal workflow without affecting the rest of the team, but also improving our productivity in that matter, okay? So it came with this exploration on SBT and other build tools alternatives in the Scala ecosystem. In, in a way that can we adopt different teams uh, for our personal productivity and our personal workflow, because not everyone in, in, in the teams works in the same way or wants uh, different feedback cycles or they have uh, different editors or different IDEs for work with, and like obligate people to to choose one uh, over the others is, is like a uh, very difficult thing to do because this choosing an editor in particular is a very very personal choice, right? So. Uh, this uh, was uh, like, like the motto for, for this start. But why we are using tools anyway? In, in a normal day, we use this for, for editing and, and comparing and testing. But uh, things happen and we need tools for a lot of tasks. And we are setting a, our product, we are deploying on different things. Even you are creating tools for for your internal company or libraries, etc. You need a lot of more things, tools that support all the the, uh, the things that you need to do to get the things done. And all the these aims to increase uh, our productivity. Okay, because uh, as of developers, uh, we. I think we get frustrated when things too much take too much time to to give those feedback. If something is not compiling, we got to see that right away. The same is something a, a test is not passing or whatever uh, we are doing. We we want to to we want to see the results as as fast as possible, but it. Is that not with the case with the tools in, in this ecosystem are in the beginning the uh, the tools uh, surrounding the Scala language were not to to mature. So we want tools that that embrace our particularities and and uh, give this freedom to choose uh, uh, personal stuff like our favorite editor or IDE or another thing that we want to code in. So these tools has to be like flexible enough to do that and embrace our particular way to work and don't force us to, to change the way uh, we like to do the things for their particular vision instead. So we want that flexibility uh, and freedom for, for guaranteed in, uh, in the tools that we are choosing. This is uh, an example of how uh, is a feedback cycle and using metals. Uh, metals, uh, I'm going to, to do more detail on this uh, implementation of the language service protocol. But this is a, a, a quite good example of how we, we want to, to see the things uh, in nearly real time to, to get feedback faster from the compiler. So the language service protocol was uh, an initiative by Microsoft and White Hat in uh, 2016. Uh, they open source it in that year. Uh, it gains very good adoption from 
more than 20 different languages and supports uh, print support for all the major editors in, in the programming world. So for, for the Scala community, they decide to go into this protocol as well to create an, uh, an instance of this particular protocol that can be used in different editors and IDEs to get uh, the semantic information from the presentation compiler of the Scala and to get more rich experience uh, when navigating through a Scala code bases. <coughs> this protocol is basically a client server client architecture. Uh, the client here is, is the editor you choose. Uh, this editor is going to send different uh, requests in the way of uh, JSON RPCs to the language server. For example, if you're going to go to the definition of certain function or symbol, uh, that is being converted to a request to the language server, uh, which one is going to respond to you with the location of the particular symbol or the definition that, that you are looking for. In this way, uh, the tool authors can develop different language services uh, agnostic to, to the developer tool that they are using. So they don't have to, to create a different uh, particular implementation for MSAN or VS Code or IntelliJ or whatever you want to use. So all these uh, servers can be reused for the particular development tool. And you can use the same tool to connect to three different servers. In, in the Scala land, uh, this is start with a proof of concept uh, by Julian Drasgos uh, is, uh, over VS Code. And there, this effort, this initial effort, evolves in, in metals. Metals stand for uh, Scala Meta, that is the part of the Scala ecosystem that is supporting that, and uh, it is from language servers, okay? Uh, as for Dotti, uh, they come from tooling in, in mind in the development, and um, all the implementations for the semantic information are, are coming from Nightly, uh, using Tasty. And in the latest version of SBT, they create a language server as well to be able to connect with the same instance of SBT from different editors and IDs at the same time. In, in the implementation of ESP in, in the Scala community, they have support for all the major uh, editors that we are using in, as, as Scala programmers. So uh, now the, the, the implementation in particular for the Scala is, is Metals. Uh, this aims to, to give our original experience in, with all the ideal features that we like. Uh, we uh, is supported uh, using Semantic DB for get all the, uh, the information from the presentation compiler to get those, uh, all the, uh, the same like capabilities that we get from, for example, uh, IntelliJ IDEA, right? Metals uh, aims to reduce the, the major complaints that the Scala users have in regular uh, tooling. Uh, the first one is indexing. When you open like IntelliJ, it starts indexing the code base. Uh, basically, you are um, unable to do anything else until the indexing process is, is done. And the other thing is that Tools like IntelliJ are used too much uh, our CPU and memory for doing this stuff. So Metal is aims to, to solve that complaint. Uh, helps little uh, new features, like you can uh, type at point. Uh, with the mouse is hover, you can get all the information for that expression in particular. Uh, giving you the signature and uh, the documentation of that. You can uh, evaluate 
in re real time uh, the particular expression that you are hovering. And this one is completions for exhaustive uh, pattern matching for unsealed structures. So notice that you can create a pattern matcher based on a silver trait. Uh, also it gives you uh, all the imports that are missing in that particular scope. So this is the latest uh, version of, of metals. Uh, until like two months ago, it was considered still a work in progress and an experimental thing. Uh, now this uh, like uh, the official implementation for the Scala Lang on um, LSP. Uh, so a little words about semantic DB is basically uh, that is came. Uh, for semantic information about the presentation uh, compiler for the Scala Lang. Uh, this gives the, the tool authors to the, the opportunity to get that information without needing an instance of the compiler running all the time, as this exposes an API for the information that they go from the compiler and can be exposed as JSON portable and SQLR. Um, so they, they can basically port all this information uh, from different parts without uh, worrying too much about uh, the compilation time in there. Now the build server protocol is like an extension from the language server protocol, but this aimed to, to create a server for our building task, like most of them it will be uh, used for compilation in a, a normal day. Uh, so we, in, in this case, we are going to, to have a, a server that can send you a uni-compilation uni file to get compiled with this Scala C and get us back all, all the warnings and errors of, of that compilation unit. So, Basically, this, this server uh, helps us to, to keep the uh, code compiler, which means when you, I don't know if you have noticed, but uh, the first time that you start, like for example, SBT, the first time that you compile everything is taking too much time, but as, as much as you compile it in, after that, is going to take uh, less and less time. That is supported by Sync, that is uh, the tool that uh, support the incremental compilation, but it's very easy to get caught uh, when you do uh, SBT reload or you rebuild, uh, restart the SBT server or something like that. Uh, all the compiling information is, is lost, but with this server protocol, is aimed to uh, to keep that information so you can reuse it. Uh, yeah, and all the future uh, compilations are going to take the next time that you already have most of the information that, that doesn't change, and you always get uh, incremental compilation. Uh, you can use Blue with uh, your favorite uh, build tool, like SBT, Maybe Gradient, or Mill, even Fury, that uh, is doesn't here. Uh, this connects with, with metals to, to also connect with uh, the editor that you are using in that moment. Um, in the latest version, there are uh, features that, that you can scale your building process using the compiling the duplication that is basically when you are compiling in parallel different things, like for example from console and SBT, uh, this, this duplication is going to compile just one of these requests and uh, every one of them as the duplicator, right? And the compiling isolation allows you to do compile on the same uh, base code uh, on parallel. You can request different uh, compilation units at, at the same time. And use Ammonite, which is a rare, uh, with really nice characteristics. Uh, for instance, the adopted web is based on Ammonite. Of course, we have SBT. Okay. Now, in the latest versions, uh, the cool thing is they now in, 
uh, are using Crucial to be able to do parallel downloads or our dependencies. There is another build tool that is called Chris build tool or CBT. This uh, has built-in uh, support. And it's different from the other ones as this is using directly uh, JBN commands to get the, the building process done. Uh, just so that we, that we have a uh, talk on, on MIR. Uh, basically, the difference between MIR and the other ones is that you can express your building process as a pure functional program, getting all the uh, commodities that comes from, function, from functional programming. Pants and then is Basel. These two build tools are aimed for more for larger code bases that in a more report environment. Uh, as uh, the both of these are dependency managed. Uh, the other ones are binary dependency managed. So this is build tools. I take in the source from the repository that I are uh, storage and are going to recreate all, all the building information from that. Uh, this is the same uh, mechanism that Fury is using. Uh, the last week, uh, Basel got a huge milestone like for the version one. Um, Basel uh, aims to, to create builds that then you can guarantee the correctness and the reproducibility of these builds. And as long as you to create a, a cluster uh, to be able to escalate your build process as they can offer you uh, different servers for the caching and different and distributed build workers. Uh, so as a wrap up, uh, this is like the initiatives or tools or solution or protocol that we have right now in the Scala community to solve these problems. Uh, here we have uh, a lot of more information on that. So thank you very much. Yes. Okay, if there's any question? Yes? You mentioned Basil. Do you have actual experience in using it on big code bases? Uh, not personally, but I am aware the big companies using Scala are using Basil and Pants. Pants is mostly in Twitter OS. Uh, the division of Twitter for open source uh, programming. Uh, Basil is using in, in companies like Stripe that are, uh, they heavily use Scala. Uh, they also have another task on that on their personal experience. And they have very good experience with that large core basis. But of course they are using more repos, uh, so it's not like aimed to use in every project. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much.